Um, okay, you may be relieved to know that I'm mindful of the time, and uh, I, I want to get to break at some, uh, something close to the schedule. So I'm going to give you sort of a pop-up cartoon version of what I was planning to say. My, my, that's, no, 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 that's my job. I'm batting cleanup. So, 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 so uh, my theme was uh, Frank the Reader uh, and Frank and books. And uh, comments have been made about his study, but if you look, if you, if you haven't ever seen the environment he arranged for himself, there's a picture right in the symposium um, brochure that you've got on the tables. Uh, and that is what uh, his environment looked like. Pop, pop. The original concept for uh, the uses of technology as resources for children who were initiating their own educations in the manner that's already been uh, described came to Frank from an essay that Robbie wrote about Montaigne's study. Uh, and you can find that essay still today. That was, as I understand it, the original source of the inspiration for the idea of creating this environment of resources within which the, the whole idea of school within the library from that essay and Frank's actual study looks like that. I'm going to skip over the various ways I got to Dalton with him. But once I was there, um, uh, I visit his study frequently, uh, his office, and uh, he had a way of greeting me. This was before the new lab was started. This was back in the old archetype days. This is when he was working without technology, trying to initiate the same kind of pedagogy. And whenever I walked in the room, I'd hear uh, he'd greet me, and uh, he'd always he'd say, Tommy, <laughs> Tommy. And I knew one of two things was about to happen. <laughs> Uh, either he was going to manipulate me into doing something that I didn't want to do. <laughs> Part of my deal with Dalton being that they'd protect my time so that I could do my work and wouldn't have to pursue academic politics in the university world, and they stuck, they stuck to that. So if I was going to commit to something, there had to be some time limits on it and so on. So he had to manipulate me into whatever it was, and he frequently did it. The other possibility was he was going to say, Tommy, I got a book you should read. And the first time he did that, I thought, oh, well, whatever. Uh, and it happened to be beyond objectivism and relativism. And it just happened that the book opened me up to, at the time I wasn't aware of it, the whole argument between this sort of postmodern and positivist, modernist ways of looking at stuff. And it just introduced me to Richard Rorty, who was a huge influence on my work since. And it was exactly what I needed. And so from then on, and I'm now putting myself in the place of the child who's been given exactly what they need through Frank's book recommendations. And from then on, I don't know, a couple of times a month, every two or three months, Tommy. And the book was always. I, I can't remember an exception. Something that really fit into what he knew I was trying to do in my work these days. Uh, I remember one book in particular, and I'm addressing now all of the people who've worked with Frank on, on the technology front. Uh, one book in particular was uh, called The Gutenberg Elegies by Sven Burkertz. And nowhere will you find a more powerful attack on the intrinsic shallowness of screens and digital technologies than in that book. And nowhere will you find a more poignant and uh, eloquent defense of reading the kind of depth that Burkert's argues can only come from reading and writing. And that was one of Frank's favorite books, even as he's launching this huge digital technology project. So I'm telling you that story because it fits with what other people have tried to. For Frank, education was always, didn't, ma didn't mean anything unless the person being educated was being challenged to become the very best person they could possibly be. Reading stuff that just reaffirmed whatever it was you already thought 
didn't have much interest for Frank. He wanted to be upset. He wanted to be troubled. He wanted to be challenged by what he was reading. Uh, and that's how he operated. So I'm telling all you guys right now who are working in technology with him, if he were still reading, he'd be reading The Circle. He'd be reading You Are Not a Gadget. He'd be reading the recent biography of Bezos and the great Amazon Inc. thing. He'd be reading all the books that create problems for people who think that the new technologies are going to save the world in some kind of automatic way. Uh, because he wanted to be challenged in that way uh, when he read. So um, I'm setting that out there as a, a kind of an example and just kind of Put the, put the seal on the argument that's sort of implicitly been going on here, that for Frank, uh, education and teaching uh, was about bringing out the best possible person from that young body and soul that you could possibly make. It wasn't some technology fetish thing that he was into at all. Okay, thank you. <laughs>